All right, decals. So there are a lot of alphas included by default with Substance Painter, and many of them are stencil oriented. And I'll show you how to use these in a second. You can also make your own very easily. Oftentimes you may need some, some additional fonts. So if you're unfamiliar with how to get free fonts, they can make a big difference. I like this website. It is called defont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. And you can search for whatever you want. Here I've done a little bit of a search for stencil fonts. You download them. They will show up as a, a zip file. Once you have opened the zip file, all you need to do is take the, the TTF file. Us uh, for PC users, for, for Macs, I guess you guys got kind of to Google it. Uh, but you just drop the TTF file directly into C Windows fonts, and then it'll be available to you in Photoshop. So another thing that I like to do is find reference for what you might decide to randomly throw into your stencil library. For instance, M69009, that looks legit to me, right? Like you would never look at that and think that's fake. So you could just grab it and then there you go. You don't have to think too hard about it. Um, I couldn't find a font that looked exactly like this. It's kind of nice, but I didn't look that hard. You probably find something else. This, by the way, is this incredible giant library of photos from an air show in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, let's see, what's it called? Let me go up to the, the cover of it real quick. There you go. So if you just Google this, you will have access to 750 photos, this massive library. It's really, really useful. And there's tons of photos of like interiors of helicopters and just whatever. So there's a, it's a, a very ripe picking grounds for looking for reference for stuff like making stencils or, or uh, little decals, whatever. So uh, that's how to grab fonts and how to find good reference. I have used some of the actual information that I found here and I'll show you what my little fonts look like. So I made one that says uh, 216. I forget where I found 216, but I think I think it was on this side. Yeah, so 0216. Maybe that's an 8. I don't know. It doesn't matter. So I grabbed that and then on one of these locks over here, I think this one here, it says CH549 or something, and so 543, I'm giving myself a, a vision test here. And I like the circular element, so I just went ahead and made that same thing for myself. Here's one that says hot surface, why not? And then uh, over here, it says BB7 road, so I made BB7 wall mount. Like, nothing all that fancy. I may not use all these, they may suck, whatever, we'll figure it out in a second. Uh, but you wanna avoid using actual logos. It's better to just kind of grab things that are informed by reality, but not somebody's actual trademark stuff. Uh, and there's actually, there's probably some things in here, like some, some reference I might go get that I might look at that I can't necessarily include because they're not my photos. In fact, maybe that, that air show uh, would have been, might be problematic, but anyway, hopefully not. Uh, if you're looking at that video and it's just all black, then probably I got an angry letter from somebody. So once you've got it here, these images are all 512 by 512. It's black and white. That's really all you need. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. So we're gonna import those alphas into the scene. So we'll go file, import resources, say add resources. We'll go to alphas, select all these. And we just need to tell it what kind of resource this is. And I've named them according to, you know, how, how uh, what they actually are. And it might've been better to say like tutorial underscore whatever. So I could do a, a simple search and have them all pop up, but I'm gonna go ahead and import them into, uh, we'll do the current session and here they are. So I'm gonna use these in a second, but what I wanna do now is I'm gonna actually just use some of the existing stuff. Cause I found some in here that I thought actually worked pretty well. And I'm gonna add it to, I'm gonna use this existing white material. So I can basically put little white, you can see I have a little test on there. So I'm gonna add a paint up here and I'm gonna call this paint decals. And I might actually drop it down a little bit in the stack so that it gets 
it gets some of this edgeware stuff applied to it automatically. You can see if I go to my brushes, grab basic hard and start painting, the paint that I paint is going to be underneath all this stuff. If I put it up here, it's probably just going to overwrite it. I don't, I don't necessarily want to do that. I definitely want to inherit whatever the scratching and, and abuse the surface has take, taken. It should be applied to the decals as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just we'll erase that. And the first thing I'm going to add, even though it's maybe a little bit tired at this point in the game, I think it's kind of still sort of relevant. Also, very important, I'm using the basic hard brush here. So let me go to my alphas. And the one that I liked was like some of this... Uh, I think it's up a bit like the caution stripe stuff here we go whoops so I just clicked on the alpha with that brush assigned which is let me see what happens if I okay so I guess all I got to do is click on these brushes and it'll go ahead or click on these alphas and it'll go ahead and, and sort of create a brush for you which is which is cool or it might just inherit whatever brush I had selected I'm not sure uh, oh yeah, so we've got this alpha here. You can see I've got, it's gonna get cold, right? Well, maybe not. No, that should be fine. I was thinking it might get trimmed, circularly trimmed around the edges, but I'm looking at, at it now and feeling pretty good about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my symmetry on. Actually, it's already on, you can see there. And what I want is I want this thing to go in this area right there. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by holding control and right mouse button, and then I'm gonna rotate it by holding control and left mouse button and going up and down. And I kind of just want to fill that space in and just make sure my edges are all kind of parallel. And I'm going to turn my symmetry off and we're going to do the same thing under here as if this was actually mounted on a ceiling in some game somewhere, you'd probably see the bottom of it. And the reason I think I can get away with it here is, you know, you would you would sort of want to be aware of where the edge of that thing was potentially if it was swinging around. If you were like the maintenance guy, you wouldn't want it bumping you on the head. And you can see it actually shot through here, which is not what we want. So I'm going to go to my polygon fill option, set it to black. And then I am going to go to the uh, polygon quad and just click through here and clean it all up. We'll head back over to paint. And I think I will go to hot surface if this is in here. Okay, and because I named it what it is, I can find it fairly easily. I can just drag this directly in there and let me decide where I would like my hot surface to go. It's gonna be, it's still gonna be white, right? So like if I didn't want this to be white paint somewhere, maybe like up here would be cool. Also, if your audience does not speak English or doesn't use you know, this regular alphabet, then you should be going in a different direction, obviously. So I'm just trying to figure out which one of these mouse controls gives me my rotation. And it's going to be control, left mouse button, and up and down. That might be a little bit too much, and it didn't even show up. I wonder why it didn't show up. Now, there may be something with the paint here where I've got something on top of it that says, don't be here. Let's see. Or maybe, oh, I just modified my opacity. Let me back up a little bit. And you can see it's catching another surface when I'm doing my, my, my stroke, and that's because it's basically just being projected from the camera down. That's a little bit too much. I think giant decals can be a little bit distracting. Oh, it looks like I got something up there, too. Really what you're looking for is just something small. And resolution can be an issue. One of the things that you can do to address resolution is you, you can actually create a separate piece of geometry. Actually, that's probably more, uh, more information than I can briefly describe, so maybe I'll hold off on that. Got our little hot surface up there. And so now if I wanted to do something in with the with the black lettering, I'll come over here and I'm gonna add a paint here and we'll just 
call this decals. And then let me remind myself what I've got here in terms of, okay, so let's go find CH543. Oh, you know what? I'm already at 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop it here. And we'll pick this up in the next video.